In a world where tech is moving faster than ever, what is the one skill, if you could learn any skill that would set you apart, not only in 2024, looking ahead to 2025 and beyond? And let me tell you, there actually is one. This coffee's kind of cold. All right, let's get to it. But first, I wanna share with you some really interesting stats, taking a step back, looking how quickly tech is moving. And I think some of these are really going to blow your mind. I know it did for me. Fact or stack one, which is really interesting. This is from IBM back in 2020, so four years old. Did you know 90% of the world's data had been created at that time in the last two years? Two years. Now you think to 2024, where we are now, how quickly we are creating new data faster than ever before. But what does this mean? Well, for one, with more data means AI on one hand has access to learning quicker and faster with all this information we are putting on the internet, which will accelerate tech at a faster rate than we've ever seen before. And another fun, well, this one's not so fun, but important fact is the World Economic Forum says that by 2025, 85 million jobs might be displaced due to how quickly tech is growing and changing. Now, listen, let's not start the whole gloom and doom thing here. The reality is lots of jobs will be displaced, taken over, but it's also new jobs are being created. And I know you're probably tired of hearing that, but it is very true. Yes, some jobs that maybe, you know, uh, especially when you think of jobs that now AI can do more of the chatbots or different things like that, they are being replaced or parts of them anyways. But who is building those? The builders, the creators, the innovators, the technologists, you and me. You, if you are someone who's staying ahead and learning these skills, you are going to find so many new opportunities coming your way. All right, we can't start this video with all negative or kind of doom and gloom stats. Let's look at some really big positive ones. Speaking of AI and machine learning, check this out. This is pretty crazy. The global AI market is expected to grow from 387 billion back in 2022 to over 1300 billion, so 1,300 billion by 2029. And this is coming from Fortune Business Insights. And that stat is pretty mind blowing when you think of it. AI is so different than a lot of the other bubbles we have seen, if you will. A lot of the other ones were more speculative, meaning they weren't necessarily already ingrained in our day-to-day -day lives, in our products, our use cases. Now with AI, we see it, every company implementing it right into their technology and software, and we're using it more than we even realize, which is pretty crazy if you ask me. So it's really growing. I, I can see why this number is continuing to grow. Another area I really wanna to touch on is quantum computing. You know, if you've seen my videos in the past, I'm kind of obsessed with quantum computing. Not that knowledgeable about it in the sense that I've just, I read about it a lot, but I'm not in that space by any means. But I just think it's going to revolutionize our world. So if you're looking for, by the way, a tip, an area, you're starting out your career and you want an area to get into quantum computing, I think that's a good one. Listen to this stat about it. The quantum computing market is projected to grow from 486 million in 2021, so three years ago, to 3,100 million by 2028. And this is another stat by Fortune Business Insights. This industry is going to explode once there's a few, you know, discoveries made that our people, scientists are working on on a daily basis. I think it's gonna change everything and put AI and everything else we've learned in the past just minuscule compared to what it can do. It's just a little side note. Got a good thing I'm recording this because maybe in a few years I'll be like, see, I knew. Maybe I won't though. Get to the point, Tiff. Okay, you're right. Sorry, back to the <laughs> topic of this video. But this information I just shared with you is very important to have a solid understanding of knowing some stats, knowing the direction of the tech industry, where it is headed, where tech as a whole is going. Because if you are someone who's looking to grow their career, stand out, maybe you're looking to build a business, you need to be informed and that is really important. Okay, here we go. Are you ready for the number one skill to learn in 2025 or build in 2025 and beyond? I mean, we just listed a bunch of stats that how quickly tech is moving. Are you going to be surprised when I tell you this skill actually isn't a technical skill, but rather a soft skill? Can you guess what it is? Adaptability. Now hear me out, this is actually a skill that just like a technical skill, you can learn. You can flex this muscle, build it up, kind of like go to the gym for it, but for adaptability, that you become so good at adapting to new technology, new things coming your way, that it just feels like second nature. 
Now you might have heard of this stat before. 50% of all employees will need reskilling by 2025. I mean, that's coming up in a few months here. Adoption of technology is continuing to increase and we've seen this more than ever. You, I'm sure in the workforce, you have seen some of your peers who are resistant or hesitant to trying out new technology. Maybe they're more of a soft skill person, but new tech is coming so quickly that now that blend between soft and technical individuals is becoming closer and closer together. If you are someone who is able to have strong soft skills and strong technical skills, you will stand out. You will be so, you will be able to really differentiate yourself from your peers or others around you by being strong in both senses. Now, maybe your job is more on the technical side and that's fine, but still flex those muscles for soft skills and vice versa. Back to adaptability, What, no matter what role you are in. How do you flex this muscle? How do you become adaptable? There are a few things you can do. I'm gonna share with you a few things that really have worked for me. When I first started out in my career, I thought, I needed to learn this list of technologies. There was specific technologies I needed to learn and if I didn't learn them, I was a failure. But I was so narrow-sighted with the technologies that I wanted to learn that I didn't see what else was out there. What really that did was I thought, oh, these are the best technologies. I'm not going to learn anything else. And I was so focused on that, I didn't learn how to learn. It wasn't until later in my career that I realized, wow, tech is starting to really pick up, move quicker than ever before. There's no way I can learn it all. And I'm sure you felt the same way. So how do you adapt then to these scenarios where you might be on a new project, say at work, and it's with a different programming language, or you're interviewing and they're in different languages. Here's a key thing. The number one thing you need to be is realizing that this is not a race. This is a walk. This is, you are like a tortoise, honestly. Meaning, take your time, ask questions, be okay with not knowing everything. That is the biggest struggle I personally had is, being okay with asking questions, putting yourself out there, feeling well, vulnerable. Now, it's not as easy, especially if you come from a technical background, you might be like, well, Tiff, tell me the three key steps or courses I need to take to become adaptable. It's not that easy and that it gets complex really quickly. That is why I think it is so interesting. And you see these people starting to have this growth mindset where they are standing out, learning tech quickly. And I think the key is asking questions, as I mentioned, staying open-minded, staying curious and just building. Maybe you take a short burst of a course on something, another course on another thing. That doesn't mean that you're not specializing in an area, but you are starting to learn the landscape. And as tech moves quickly, that will become absolutely key. Another thing that is really essential being able to adapt quickly is understanding the basics. Now this depends on what role in particular you are in, but let's take web development. Nowadays, as we know, AI can do a pretty good job of the basics when it comes to web development. Maybe you're thinking, well, there's no point in learning it. I'm just gonna lean on AI. When in reality, understanding why things are the way they are will help you move forward so much faster later in your career. It might feel like you have to take a step back because you're spending all this time on the basics and everyone else is using AI to do so to get ahead, but I cannot stress enough, learn the basics of whatever role you are in. The foundation, okay. We've covered what skill is most in demand in the sense that employers, this isn't something that they can necessarily put on a resume, but they will see it right away when you are going to apply for jobs, seeing your history and background, or even your portfolio, they will notice it. It's like the super secret skill, but it brings up a question. Okay, great. Adaptability, number one skill in demand. What skills are falling by, what is that quote? The waste side, the waste, I, what skills? are not in demand. Let's just go with that. Here are some skills, some areas that I believe will not continue to be in demand. The first one is, it could be go either way, which is specializing in a single static technology. Now this could be argued in saying, well, TIFF specialists are very important. And I agree with you, they are. But just be careful, there's a fine line where you become too specialized. Be specialized if that is something you're really interested in, but also be able to adapt by continuing to just at least explore what else is out there for new technologies. Another skill that I think is at risk of becoming obsolete or at the very least less in demand is having a narrow focus on technical skills without a business context. And this goes a little bit to what I was saying earlier where gone are the days where it's it, this huge separation between soft skill individuals and hard skill individuals. As tech becomes more accessible, that line gets blurred. So if you are a technical person, make sure you are understanding the business needs as well and vice versa. 
All right, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this rather candid video. I There was a bit of it through stats and points I really wanted to make, but I really wanted to highlight. We're going into the fall, school starting up. We're starting to think of 2025, even though it feels like far away, it's going to come quickly. I think the fall and getting into winter is typically the best time we are upskilling, learning new things. So whether you are in the tech industry, starting your own company, no matter where you are at, being adaptable will make you stand out and honestly get ahead. I know it might sound cheesy, but I've seen it firsthand from myself and my peers or colleagues at different areas I've worked with them, different consulting jobs I've worked, everything like that. Being open-minded, curious, and now more than ever realizing we don't know everything and that's okay. That's what we're here to do, continue to learn, hopefully together. All right, I left some video topics for our next video down in the comments. Go vote, what topic do you want me to cover next? And I'll see you all soon. Thanks everyone. Oh, and hit the subscribe button. Okay, bye.